Do you see what I see? To be fair, I'm not actually seeing very much. The sun's in like a really rough spot right now. You don't care. Anyway, hi! Josh the RV Nerd here at Bish's RV. I'm in Coldwater, Michigan today, but we got these at a bunch of places. This is the new 380DQS right here. Um, and basically, it, it can kind of mean like double queens, but we are looking at it today with an optional front bunk. You can get this one two different ways. This could be a true dual private bedroom model, like very handy if you've got bigger kids or a liter you need a literal mother-in-law suite, this one can do it. Or where this can be really handy is if like you've got a seasonal site and you're just gonna park a camper. There's nothing that says you can't tow this, but this is a big long trailer and not everybody wants to tow that much or has the vehicle to do it. But if you got like a seasonal site and you're just gonna leave it there, this could be absolutely awesome for like a family or grandparents who maybe occasionally have some grandkids come over in the summertime or something like that. This would be an absolute uh, rock star kind of floor plan. It is carpetless through and through, so cleaning is easy, very handy if you're near any sort of like sandy situation. And being a Jacob, You've got that two plus three year warranty that basically nobody else matches. You've also got things like Goodyear tires, um, a plywood roof deck, and a bunch of other little details like that. Uh, also, obviously, that patio door, but that's the thing. This is a really niche based in betweener kind of floor plan where it's not a bungalow, it's not a destination trailer, it's not what people call a park model. It is, in fact, a true full-on travel trailer. But I, I don't think you gotta squint too hard to look at this one to see. It was probably made for leaving in one spot more often than not. And as a result of that, it includes some things like that big giant residential fridge for lots of food, that sliding patio door, and no slides on the door side of the camper. So if you are at a seasonal site and you wanna build a deck onto the sucker, it's gonna be perfect. Now, it ain't. I think a perfect RV for everybody. And in point of fact, the manufacturer actually made one little slip up oversight when they were building this RV. Nothing major, but I'm gonna point it out because just because it's not perfect doesn't mean I'm gonna conveniently gloss over it. I always want you to know you're going to get the real deal of Vander Holyfield kind of facts from us here. And if you appreciate that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And I've talked enough, let's get started. And let's rip this bandaid off. Let's get this right out of the way. You hear me say something like the manufacturer forgot to do something and that instantly starts setting off some radar alarms. It was a small thing. It's a dumb thing. It's not a thing I see happen often. But they forgot to put the mounts in the slide floor to actually stand up the table in the dining area. And what I wasn't going to do is insult you and try to hide it by just saying, oh, I didn't feel like putting the table up today and leaving it down sort of like in the half-closed sleeper position. I'm not gonna do that kind of stuff to you. I want you to know that if I see something, I say something. I'm not gonna claim that I'm perfect. I'm no authority on anything, but I do wanna be reasonable, I do wanna be fair. This is a small little thing that obviously we're going to take care of. It's not like they forgot to seal the roof. That's obviously a major problem, but it's a thing. And maybe that might shape your view, shape your opinion, shape your confidence level. If that, if that is the case or whatever, I get it. I respect it. That's why I went out of my way to do this and spend an extra minute talking about it. At least hit that subscribe button if you're new with us or like our video. If you appreciate the fact that I won't lie by omission because that's still lying. But flipping the script around here, let's say you were sitting at that dining area, which without the table is actually a good demonstration of how you can repurpose the, uh, a, a, a U dinette as something of a, a wraparound lounge. Now, I'm also not going to insult you and say things like, oh, a dinette's super comfy. You don't need a, you don't need a sofa. I respectfully, I don't feel that way. Maybe you do, but I, I, I don't. You see, you've got that big sliding patio door right there. The entertainment center actually covers part of it, but it only covers the part that doesn't fully open. Um, the uh, TV's not standard on this, by the way. That is something that you can get added as an option, or you could add your own. I'd be kind of curious to know, would you rather add your own and get the TV you want, or would you just rather have it done from the factory? Similarly, while you're answering that, uh, a couple other things. Right now, we're looking at the tri-fold sleeper sofa option. By default, this has a jackknife bifold sofa. So we're looking at another optional piece of equipment there. We're also looking at the farmhouse decor today. You can get anything that's white looking. You can get in a brown decor called uh, cottage some, something or other anyway. Um, so, you know, just kind of let me know if you were going to get something like this. How would you want it all outfitted? 
Now, uh, you don't have amazing campsite window coverage, but sitting here in their living room with that big patio door, it, it doesn't suck because you can see right out that thing. Um, you can also, of course, lock that door to keep the gas station murder hobos out. And I love the fact that we've got a clutter cut and shoe garage right by the door right there. That just makes tons of sense. Uh, they are running HDMI wiring. It doesn't have a DVD player, but chances are any sort of TV you get would have its own DVD player. Up top here, we've got a six foot nine ceiling. Um, whereas, you know, some trailers, uh, you know, might give you six and a half foot. The other people I know of that build a floor plane like this, they're often a little bit taller like this, but it's not like full on super duper tall, like a big crazy destination trailer, like a, uh, a J flight bungalow. This is a standard body camper. It's eight foot wide. It's six foot nine tall. It's not extra tall. It's not extra long, anything like that. And just so you can see the top of the table that normally would be standing there uh, right now, this does in a way really drive home the fact that we've got a carpetless slide and apparently my dirty shoes managed to catch a groove right on the edge of that slide out flap and leave a little dirt spot there. I'm going to have to come back later after this and uh, get that swept out and cleaned up. Um, the, uh, uh, slide is a nice three foot deep. It does lack slide side windows. So that will be a thing to keep in mind. Although with these double panoramics right there and the sliding patio door, if you slide the screen door shut, you can still get some pretty sweet cross breeze, uh, whipping and ripping through here pretty nicely. Very solid lighting package in here as well. And you can always turn those off individually. Normally I would say for power sa uh, consumption saving while boondocking, but I... I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't want to assume. This isn't the kind of RV that I personally predict to be used a lot for boondocking, especially with that, um, you know, fifth wheel sized 18 cubic foot residential refrigerator over there. Uh, really kind of that, that's a big indicator right there that this is something that they probably expected just to leave parked in one spot. Now it is carpetless. It does use floor vented heating. Um, that might be a point of concern for some folks. Personally, I'd either put a vent filter pad in that, maybe put a throw rug over it, something like that if it's summertime and I don't need the heat function and I want to keep the dirt and the stuff, the Legos and the Skittles out of it. That's that's a thing I would do. Cabinetry, by the way, all pocket screwed. And uh, we can actually start to get a look inside a lot of the storage starting up top right about now. Notice how they throw a shelf in that overhead cabinet, which is handy. And space below the sink for a wastebasket next to those plywood drawers. That is a nice find. Plus... Big pots and pans, uh, you know, space right below the uh, the stovetop there. Um, the uh, the pantry is actually kind of across from the fridge uh, over by that dinette, which folds down into a big sleeper. Uh, well, it's one of those, like, that's a nice adult size sleeper. And you see with the trifold sleeper sofa here, that's one of the kind of cool things about this camper. You can get it built with dual queen beds up front or with the bunkhouse option we're going to see. Uh, it, it could be a model that like, I could actually see a couple sleeping in this. Like if somebody has sleep apnea and you have like a snoring issue and it, you know, could be a problem for your partner. I could see the dual queen beds working well on this. If you have an adult child who needs their own sort of, uh, quiet, separate decompression space, that could be cool. Or what if sometimes, you know, you're an adult and you have an adult kid who has their own kids. You could have space for adults to sleep out here and still have a private little space up here to sleep all the little kiddos. So this is a floor plan that can be very multifaceted, very multifunctional. And, uh, you know, again, by, by default, normally it would have a north-south front walk around uh, queen bed. Now, to be fair, that will be a short queen in the front bed. It will, however, be an 80-inch long uh, queen or king back in the rear bedroom. So keep that in mind. You've got one short bed and then you've got one big bed, or you have the option of going with three short beds like we're seeing here today. It's kind of funny though. They call it a quad bunk option, even though it's, I mean, it's obviously not. There's there's only, there's only three beds here. <laughs> what is nice though in this front room, every little area has its own uh, light, has its own plugs, cross breeze windows. Um, there's not a ton of storage in this front room. That's maybe a thing to kind of consider. We're going to take a look at it all in just a second here, but at least you do have that middle bank right there. Uh, if you want to, you can add some entertainment action going on uh, right over there. You could maybe have a little, you know, Nintendo Switch game station going on here, depending on, you know, what you do and what you allow on your 
uh, personal little camping trips. I do like that extra overhead storage there. But again, this is all very specific to the front bunk model. The front queen model is just going to have, you know, normal side stands and hanging wardrobes on both sides. Now, taking a look down here, I like that even the little mini bunk room has its own, uh, you know, doors under the dinette seating right there to get to all the storage. And there's the, there's a little more storage than you realize in here because if you turn around the other direction, you see that those two stacked single bunks, which are 300 pound rated each, by the way, with like a double thick versus industry standard mattress, they have their own little mini kind of dresser shelves right here. And a lot of times, kids for a camping weekend, they don't need a lot of hanging clothing storage. You just need to be able to fold up a lot of croc socks and undies and um, I don't know. I think maybe it could work. And the fact that you have a sliding privacy door to kind of shut that down, I think a lot of people will appreciate that. Now, from the front now, facing the back, we've kind of seen this before. Moving through that uh, big door by the refrigerator, that will give it us uh, to the walkthrough big middle bath. And passing through that door, we come to our, well, bathroom, obviously. And with this having that six foot nine ceiling, you see that I've got some very nice headroom in that shower. Now that's a radius shower and they're not all created equally. I found the elbow room in this to be okay. Not amazing by any stretch uh, of the imagination. But that's one of those things I think you really gotta try on for size and, and, and feel it out for yourself. Now, your toilet paper uh, roll, your butt napkin holder, it's actually mounted over there on the door, which maybe this isn't a great camera angle that looks terrible. It's actually really, like, perfect. It's perfect in person. It's a weird spot for it, but it works really, really well. And uh, over on the left side there, you see that this bathroom actually has some really nice uh, linen storage in there. So I've got a little bit of a question for you. They could maybe go with a bigger shower in this, but you would lose all of that bathroom storage we just saw. Which way is the better way to go, in your opinion? Now, I don't normally chop bathroom footage up like this, but uh, basically with the shape of the bathroom and with the way the doors swing, I can't really give you any kind of cohesive footage trying to do it without jumping around like the house of pain, so pardon me. Now, look, looking at the toilet space, once again, maybe that's a little bit better view of, uh, of where the toilet paper roller is, but the, uh, <laughs> but get it like the minions. Anyway, um, your, your hip elbow shoulder room around that is fantastic. Overall, I, I, I don't dislike this bathroom. I've got one gripe personally, and that is with these Indiana built units in the Jayco J flights. They don't do a medicine cabinet over here. Now, I think that there's some really good storage on that wall opposite of us. Like, I'm in the shower recording this. To the left of us right now is where that would be located. I would really like to see that be a medicine cabinet. Or, like, there's this big blank space on the wall. And with this being a stick and tin trailer, what that means is that about every 16 inches on center, you've got a wall stud over here. So if you do want to add something to it, get a little stud finder, hold it up to your chest and go, yup, there's one, so that you've calibrated it properly. And then you could, you know, maybe hang something over there, even if it's just a couple towel bars that I think this bathroom kind of lacks. But that is just this nerd's opinion. Uh, again, I don't claim to be an authority on things. That's just how I personally see it. And I am trying to keep a, a, a pretty... Well, I mean, I don't use wide-angle camera lenses, but I try to keep, uh, I guess, what you call a wide-angle view or a very fair and open-minded view of uh, a few different things on the RVs that I go through and I review, just because everybody camps different. And there's there's people who leave comments like, oh, this is terrible, this is stupid, why do manufacturers do that? And I mean, without fail, the very next comment is, this is brilliant, why don't most manufacturers do this? <laughs> That's just how it always works out. Now, a uh, couple things with the bedroom right here. Uh, you can see that we built this with 50 amp service and put on the optional second air conditioner. This is a big trailer with a lot of cubic foot of space and multiple separate rooms. The living room does have a central air, but man, I, I feel like it does need that extra air conditioner uh, right there. Now, what we're looking at over here is the 70 by 80 optional king bed so that you can really stretch out and have some more space. 60 by 80 true queen is uh, actually the standard here. And if we look down below it, you can see that it still maintains a queen base, so it'd be easy to size down. But this is interesting. On the rear wall, they actually built like either storage or a desk into this thing, which is super, super rare. Um, the, the desk would definitely be easier to access and more functional 
uh, I think with the queen bet option than the king that we're looking at here. With the king, um, I don't know that you would use it as a desk. So how you use this rear room may actually change depending on what you want to do with it. And I'm actually, now that I say this, wondering, I could see somebody ordering this with the standard front queen bed and then basically pulling the bed out of this room back here. And this could very easily convert into a nice office. I can see that working very, very well myself. Uh, but again, that's just my two cents. Now, TV hookups across from the bed uh, up here on the wall. You notice how they didn't do a whole lot of fancy boxed in or phrasing in or anything like that. Deadbolt on the door so the gas station murder hobos don't come and get you. And you're going to look at this, and this feels very vanilla and very blank to me. But when we close the slide, because it is a full 80-inch, not shorty McShort pants bed, if there was a dresser here, it would basically uh, interfere with and overlap with the uh, the mattress. And that could be a problem. So they couldn't put much on that wall. And I'd be kind of curious, you know, how would you handle that right there? Now, doing a little Michael Jackson moonwalk backwards here. One other thing to mention, um, you know, you might sleep a bunch of people in this thing. But it does have a, 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 a tankless water heater. So if you need to take a whole bunch of showers back to back to back to back to back, you can do so without anybody, you know, having to get frostbite for the last shower. And when we close the slides up, um, it reveals what I think is one of the more, f not funny, haha, but like funny, huh, interesting kind of aspects of this floor plan. The fact that it has some of the best slide closed access you're going to find in almost any RV this size. Whether you have the, the front bedroom or front bunkhouse, you can get in here, which is really nice if you want to pack up some clothes. The kitchen is like 99% accessible and functional. Uh, by the way, towable RVs, the slides are not really tested to see if you can sit in them or occupy them when they're retracted. So a little pro tip for you from Uncle Josh. Towables and motorized are different. Um, nobody tests if you can sit in them when they're closed. So nobody can really guarantee it. And if you're talking to some other dealer and goes, oh, no, you can do that, that's fine. Get it in writing, because if it breaks, uh, if it's not in writing, if you don't have something to keep them liable, you're going to be paying the repair bill. But <clears throat> it's kind of nice that even though this might be parked most of the time, if you want to get in here and pack up food, you want to uh, pack up clothes, you can. And remember that because this does have those traditional metallic fold-out steps instead of the big stable steps, if this RV is like in a storage yard and it's packed right up next to something, it's still far, far easier to get to. Now let's talk towing. If we uh, take another look at the weights and the measures here, you see that the maximum GVW of this is about 9,850 pounds. Some people are going to look at this and go, ooh, my half ton can tow 11, 12,000. I can handle that. And I surely would not. And uh, like Leslie Nielsen said, don't call me Shirley. So let me know what's your vector, Victor. Uh, neither here nor there. The reason I say that, this thing is long. It is strong. It is down to get the camp down. But it, <laughs> the fact that it is so big and the hitch weight on this, I think is going gonna, is gonna to disqualify uh, half-ton towing, generally speaking. Um, the, uh, the 23 season saw a revamp to the front profile of these, and it is looking good, I think. J-Flight was one of the, the few holdouts that was still doing a corrugated nose. Um, the, uh, the smooth sweep nose on the front, there's a catch-22 with that. It requires a thicker, heavier, more expensive metal because it doesn't have the corrugation, which actually gives it strength. That's why the sidewalls are like that. Um, here's a random factoid for you you probably don't care about. In England... Uh, they will actually sometimes uh, like make brick walls in a curve, in a wave pattern, because the wave adds strength to the wall, and they can use a single layer brick instead of double. Even though they're doing it uh, with the wave, it actually ends up saving material. Well, that's kind of the thing with that corrugated metal. That's why it's all crimped and, and, and wavy looking like that. Now, those new stabilizer jacks on a trailer this long with potentially, you know, two, three, four, five bodies rolling around in here and not the kind of bodies that you're going to shove into a trunk in a Robert De Niro movie, the trailer's going to wiggle jiggle all over the place. Having the extra stability of those new style stabilizer jacks, that is going to be a nice, nice find. Now, 
the front end of this uh, will look different on the side walls depending on whether you get the bunk model or the double queen model. The bunk model obviously gives us that extra big window. The, the, the double queen model won't do that. And I, I haven't verified, but I do believe the double queen model actually maintains a full front pass-through storage compartment that this one lacks. Outside storage is a limiting factor on this one. We're going to talk about it more a little bit later. Because the sidewall is so flipping long, there's just no way they could put one mega awning all the way down this thing. And I don't know that I would want a split awning right in the middle of my RV campsite. So I think they did the best they could with what they had. And with no um, slides over on the campsite, there's nothing blocking you from like putting a, a deck down here. And notice how they went with the traditional folding steps because a lot of people with trailers like this tend to do that. Normally J flights would have those fold out uh, stable steps. You don't see those here. Now, one of the differences between this and a bungalow, uh, there, there's several, like, you know, this is eight foot wide, it's six foot nine tall, it's not eight and a half foot wide and like eight and a half foot tall or whatever, a, a bungalow is big, you know. This still has Goodyear radials. This is a normal J flight in that regard. Bungalows actually do not. Bungalow, by the way, is Jayco's name for their destination park type trailers. Uh, and because they are really intended to park, they don't have the fancier stabilizer jacks. Uh, they don't have the better tires like this one has. Uh, so that's actually kind of an interesting thing where these do surpass a bungalow in that regard, but they do borrow from bungalow with that uh, bigger fridge inside. Now you're seeing no ladder on the back of this. It is a fully walkable roof. In fact, it's one of the industry's only plywood decked roofs. Jayco's one of the only manufacturers that does that. Um, additionally, there is a rear roof ladder option. So let me ask you, if you were getting a camper like this, would you want a ladder on it? And I'll go first. My answer, heck yes. Heck yes, I do. But I've heard some people have shared feedback uh, for, for park-type trailers where they're not living in it all the time, where they visit now and then. They found kids' footprints on the roof, and that's spooky and dangerous. So I could see somebody not wanting the... Um, uh, ladder on the back, but you chime in and you tell me. Tankless on-demand water heater means no chilly willy showers for anybody. Um, and as we back up here, this is what I was saying. This is your biggest chunk of outside storage, especially if you get the bunk model under the bed. This is, you know, if you lift the bed up from the inside, it's the exact same space that we saw. Uh, so you may decide to put a partition in that. I don't know how you, you plan on going about it, but at least it does have the magnet hold back for making that easy. One of the things that is awesome on this floor plan though, and that was dangerously close to being like Randy Savage, one of the things that is awesome on this mean gene is the fact that it is a single sewer outlet. Kitchen, bathroom, Eva stuff all comes out right here and uh you may have noticed that is a nicely enclosed belly i like the location of the hot cold outside shower right where it counts i like the the fact that the water heater and the uh furnace exhausts they're over here on the uh the neighbor's side of the rv uh not right up close to where you know you might have kids bopping around on the other side and again the, uh, the front end of this changes with the bunk bottle. We get that double, double stacked window right there. Uh, they all open for airflow, by the way. You don't see how this one's split for airflow because that is a fire escape egress style airflow window, which actually gets you probably some of the best airflow in the entire RV. This is where I think the queen bed version would have a full true pass through. We lack that here because of the bunk setup. And one other cool thing, they still maintain their turn signal safety lighting package because again, this might still be a trailer that gets pulled around. So you flip on your left-hand turn signal to change lanes, all of the lights, including that little marker light right there down the side of the RV, they're all gonna blink uh, so that other people have an idea of what you're doing with this, I don't know, 40, 40 plus foot big rig right here, brother. Because last thing you want when you got this much trailer swinging around is to not know your clearance and blind spots and take some RV nerd out driving his little Kia Soul next to you in your blind spot like an idiot that I am. So thank you again for tuning in. Uh, if you appreciate how we share the good with the bad, make sure you hit that subscribe button. As always, I'll leave you a link in the description to check on pricing and availability. Um, I may actually leave you uh, some links to maybe a couple bungalows or some other big bunkhouse models um, of a slightly different arrangement. Like if you're like, I like everything, I don't like that sliding patio door. Maybe I got a couple other options for you. Check that out. And let me know again, how would you want this one? Would you want it 
king bed, queen bed. Would you want it with the the, the second queen bedroom or the front bunkhouse like we've looked at it uh, here today? Um, oh, by the way, Catalina also makes a model that has a, uh, a convertible room, but theirs is actually the rear room. I think I just spit. I'm so sorry. That's anyway. Obviously, I don't edit my videos very much. Um, theirs is either a rear bedroom or a rear bunkhouse. They kind of do it differently. So take a look at those links in the description. Let me know how you'd like it or which one you'd like and why. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Thank you.